Old Day. My name is Tom Hollingsworth, and I'm very happy to be here this week uh, hosting some great conversations that we're going to be having uh, all about things related to edge. You're probably asking yourself what that means. Well, that tells me that you weren't listening to this season of Utilizing Tech, hosted by Stephen Foskett, uh, talking all about things related to the edge. I will tell you, though, it's a very big, broad topic, and a lot of people that are out there just they don't quite understand what constitutes edge. Is it networking? Is it compute? Is it software? Um, so the first topic actually comes to us courtesy of Bart. Um, you know, I'm sure that you're probably thinking, oh, they're going to do another one of those things where, oh, what is the edge? What does that really mean? But I wanted to take it in a slightly different uh, direction. Is there just one edge? I mean, we'd say it. It's, it's, like, it's like the guitarist for you, too. The edge, right? But is it really? I mean, it really depends on who you're talking to. Um, if, if I have a background in networking. And so when I say the edge, I have a very different definition of what that looks like. And as we found out earlier, my definition of what edge looks like is completely different than John's, who's a networking person, who's completely different than Bart or Steven or Ned or Jim. So I want to open this up for some conversations with the delegates. When I say the edge, do you have a concrete definition of what that looks like? Or is it something a little bit more nebulous? And, and is that, does that mean that the edge can be anything I want it to be and whatever it's going to take to get you to buy something from me? Um, from my perspective, I always think of the edge as completely device driven, right? Or device related. I'm thinking about a factory floor or I'm thinking about the home watering system I built for my little stand up garden just outside uh, on my deck, right? Uh, the ability to gather information uh, on a very uh, concise but sometimes rapid consumption of that same information, whether it's weather uh, reports or, uh, you know, is a machine malfunctioning on the factory floor, that's where my brain goes to immediately, right? Uh, it's uh, nowhere near like a, an airline reservation system. It's something that we're gathering information from on an frequent but not microsecond by microsecond basis. I think my view got very crystallized from uh, and actually one of the podcast episodes that we did that will be published soon um, from a friend of mine who works from an ed, for an edge company um, and his view of his, his, I've been asking everybody, what do you think the edges define it? He said it's a concept. Edge is a concept. Mm. And it gets a little beyond just the devices. It kind of comes to the concept of you want to be able to put an application to run where it's most performant for the user, whether that end user is a machine or an algorithm or a person. And what does it take to do that? That is actually the edge. For example, one of the examples he gave was what if you live really, really close to a cloud um, data center? Mm. And you, because of that, you have super, super high, la um, high, la low la high latency. Low latency. Late latency. I knew you were going to catch me up. Thank you. You have really fast speeds because you're really close to the data center. Um, um, are you on the edge? And maybe you are. So I think um, it kind of put a new sense of thinking about edge and what edge is. It's more like cloud. These arguments we're having about what is edge. We had these arguments about clouds where nobody could put this together. This is just, it is, um, it's a concept. And the concept is how do you get the application performant, the best performance it can be closest to whatever is consuming it. And it's funny that you mention it that way is that we have this problem when we use like a very overloaded term. Well, for me, it is uh, it is a concept, but I always look at where the data is generated. So we have indeed the cloud, but yeah, what is the cloud? There are so many clouds these days. Uh, so we have the cloud data center from someone else. We have our own data center maybe, but I know this. And, and the last numbers that I saw is that 50% uh, of the data that is generated today is indeed those intelligent devices which is outside the cloud, outside the data center. And, and in Belgium, I have a practical example. When I, when I meet my customers and we're talking about those edge solutions that we're going to talk later about and tomorrow, is uh, one of the examples is near the highways. They're placing everywhere those uh, smart cameras uh, to look at the license plates. And instead of sending all that data, high definition data, to a data center or to a cloud, 
to get that license played out and then send a bill because you were driving too fast or something like that. Instead of doing all the calculations and the algorithms in that data center, no, do it on site near that camera. And so for me, a smartphone, a self-driving car, a train, a plane, the space station, that camera near the highway, that is for me the edge where the data is generated. And because of performance, because of latency, because of data gravity and efficiency, why send the data elsewhere if we can treat it locally and then make those decisions? At least that's for me the edge. And so that's why I'm interested in the solutions that we're going to see uh, later on today. Um, how it can be solved. And so for me, it's compute, storage, networking, a little bit of everything. All right, Jody, what did you have to add? Well, what I had on it was when I first got invited to Edge Field Day, I thought, okay, well, what, what's this all about? Like, I'm a networking guy. I think edge routing. It's like, so you got you inside of your network, you've got the edge, if that, that's the edge. Well, obviously, that definition doesn't fit in edge computing. There's, it's a much bigger concept. So with everything being data center focused, cloud focused, everything is where all your data is in the middle of the diagram. When you start going out to the outside of the diagram, your edge is basically the edges of the diagram. It's, mm -hmm. it's what's far from your data, what's far from your, your cloud, what's out there. Um, and as, as you said, it's not necessarily stuff that needs to come back, it's stuff that can be independent or just report occasionally it also doesn't even need to be connected all the time. Okay. You know, it's, but the whole figuring out what edge is as a definition is it's the edges of the diagram. So I agree with a lot, what a lot has been said, and I like the comparison to cloud. Um, because cloud isn't a place, for me, cloud is more an operational model of how you interact with technology. Uh, cloud introduced a lot of concepts like that of self-service, the ability to scale up and scale down dynamically, having uh, resource pools in a multi-tenant environment. Like those are all things that can be set up anywhere. Um, Edge in the same way to me is an operational model to a certain degree, but it's also a set of constraints that are unique to Edge workloads. And sometimes that's going to be you know, network latency or just completely disconnected environments. It's going to be uh, sometimes harsh environments that they're operating in. You know, you might have an edge device that's sitting in an equipment cabinet in the middle of the desert, and that's part of the edge. Um, and it may also be just actual physical dimensions where the device has to operate. You don't get racks and racks and racks of uh, devices you have maybe a quarter of a rack that, or not, no rack at all, where your edge device needs to operate. So I think edge is not a place, but it is a unique set of constraints and uh, an operational model for dealing with those constraints. Jim, Steven? I agree with everybody. <laughs> it is uh, a, a place where computing occurs uh, you could maybe argue sometimes it's not just about where the data is generated, but where it's stored. Uh, I agree with Ned's point that it's in a way an operational model, uh, and and the idea of constraints is important. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned uh, energy availability, right? Uh, there's more conversation around processing data using AI, whether it's generative AI or not, is uh, another matter, but using some NVIDIA chip near where the data is processed has some different uh, requirements in terms of energy consumption and heat generation. What can we do outside of our typical data center to accommodate those workloads? Do we have some sort of a liquid immersion cooled mini data center, uh, you know, some sort of pod that's located on a campus? Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, there are frameworks, the one that I typically try to keep in mind is the one from the Linux Foundation that uh, I and a lot of other folks have worked on, and that's the, the definitional work uh, around, say, there's a device edge, there's a, uh, another gateway type edge device. There's, we divide it into sort of an on-premise and, and nearby type locations. Lots of ways to slice and dice it. Uh, Any way you look at it, I suppose it's an interesting new management device management challenge as well. 
I'll bring up one more thing I think that's important to keep in mind that we talked about a lot on the season of utilizing edge is um, absolutely it's about constraints. It's about the requirements for um, for the hardware. It's about so many things. But another thing that came up is the application ownership. So just like Ned was saying, in terms of um, being edge being an operational model, it's also a political um, division in many companies in that edge uh, applications are special purpose. They're generally driven by business units. Uh, so for example, you know, retail or manufacturing, you, you know, these, these aren't being picked by IT. They're not even maybe even being supported by IT. And that I think is another thing that really changes the game when it comes to edge, similar to what's happened in many ways in SaaS applications in cloud that are owned and operated by businesses instead of by IT. Yeah, one interesting thing on that, um, I mean, we, we've made the parallel to cloud. We, we're talking about how um, you know, different divisions outside of IT may be owning these edge devices. I mean, we went through the whole shadow IT thing with cloud and, and we're going to do a very similar thing with, with edge or are doing, maybe is more appropriate, in the fact that IT may lose some control through this and we need to be prepared for that. We need to um, be open to these edge, these edge scenarios and, and be open to helping the business figure these things out rather than being the department of no um, and, and helping them understand the best way to do this so that it ties in with everything else. So we use our data properly, that it moves in and out where, where we need it to be so that it doesn't become an island that sometime in the future IT is going to have to reabsorb and, and deal with whatever the business put out there. So I, I like those parallels with cloud as well because it is a change in the way that we do things. I think we'll find that we're doing more of it than than we were with cloud when cloud first started becoming a thing. Um, because edge exists today. It's existed for as long as we've had IT. Um, you know, you think about the mobile data centers they have in um, theaters of war, for example. I mean, those have existed for a very long time and that's a that's an extreme example of edge as well. So those, those have existed. It, it's not creating a new paradigm per se, like we were with cloud though. I think it's more about absorbing a way that we've been doing things and, and operationalizing it in the same way that IT normally works. How about if we call it, I'm, I look at it more as a changing of the administrative border of where <laughs> things are sitting. You know, um, it, there was a big change, you know, we went from mainframes to minis to PCs, sitting down in places. That was edge computing. I mean, all we're doing, it's the other side of the pendulum moving back and forth of centralized computing versus doing things at the edge. That's a very important point, John, because I, I, I kind of talk about this a lot where you, you do, you see the pendulum going back and forth, centralized control versus distributed control. Mm -hmm. We saw from client servers swing back to the cloud, which is just basically a big giant mainframe. But now we're starting to see that there's reasons why client server developed in the first place and the pendulum is swinging back to giving more localized control. Yeah, I think I want to go piggyback more on what Stephen was saying about the politics of this, because if you really think how cloud adoption was born and, and how it really jumped off and went crazy, it's because developers got sick of the department of no, like Brian said, and the cloud saw that as an opportunity. The cloud provider saw that as an opportunity. They're like, just bring us your credit card, no more IT hassles, you're good to go. But then as the develop, what the developers developed became um, more and more enterprise-like and bigger and bigger, they did realize there's a struggle. Do we stay here? Do we go back on the premises? What do we? What is the best thing to do for our application? How do we make it the most performant? Is it the most performant here? Do we have regulations that we need to have it here? What do we do? So that was definitely, yes, the, there was, the cloud was able to greenfield a very um, scalable infrastructure, but the way they gained adoption was targeting specifically developers who were sick of IT telling them they couldn't do things. So I'm going to ask a question. If cloud grew out of the fact that organizations were wanting to increase performance or reduce the amount of development time or what have you, and they were willing to kind of build their own solution to do that, what is the analog for that in the edge? Because I think I have some ideas about what that looks like, but we start running into roadblocks. So like, for example, Think about your average police car. 
it's festooned with technology now. There's like two laptops in there and a bunch of radios and things like that. To me, that's kind of that shadow IT approach to edge. It's like we need to get these vehicles enabled. We need to turn them into mobile compute centers. But the real way to do it, if you want to use the quotey fingers, is an autonomous vehicle where all of the compute is integrated into the machine itself as opposed to being bolted on. But then the, going back to what Brian said, that becomes a political issue because when it's discrete compute inside of a different kind of container, IT still owns it. But if it's integrated into the container itself, does IT have to give up that control in order to be able to say it's now a solution, not kit bashed? See, I think uh, I agree there was a certain level of cloud adoption when it came to like the Department of Known developers and whatnot wanting to get on with it and just consume resources. But I think a big part of what drove cloud adoption initially was just people not wanting to deal with compute and things mm -hmm. in the traditional way, upgrades, all that sort of stuff. Outsource that to someone else and let someone else take care of it so we can get back to doing other business things, right? And I think, in a way, that's sort of what we're seeing with Edge, the industry and the devices, connectivity, all these things that allow us to actually genuinely bring that stuff back to the Edge is, is getting there. I mean, look at what Starlink's doing and what that's going to enable for remote sites that aren't going to get fiber anytime soon or any form of connectivity. Devices are getting smaller, more powerful. We've got AI chips that are built, you know, specifically for in cameras, like you were saying, but mm -hmm. um, I think that's what's fundamentally driving a lot of the edge adoption back as devices are catching up, technology is catching up. I agree. I agree. And I, I think that there's a, there's a lot of, we have to look at edge in a new way because it, we have the ability to do things we were never able to do. I mean, I haven't been assisted men in a really long time, but it wasn't easy and it's way easier than it was when I was doing stuff. But principles and technologies, uh, the, the fundamentals are all the same. I won't say the technology, they're the same. Um, but the, the technology, the underlying technology can handle this with all the things you just mentioned. Um, so the, the, the idea of this concept of the edge being a concept, right? Go back to your police car um, example. It depends on what is the best thing for the community that the police are serving, for how they see the police should be enacted and approached. What, what does a police car need in it? And how do we make that available? And if that's not offered to us from uh, the manufacturers of the vehicles that we're purchasing, then how do we not add it on, but how do we make this? How do we turn as IT professionals from being the department of no to saying, yeah, you guys totally need that. This will make the community happy. This will give, help you do your job better. This will save us all money. And here's how we're going to do it. That ends up being the promise of what edge is instead of having the political boundaries behind it with what ended up with clouds. That's it, right? Like the saving money thing and making businesses more efficient is, is it. Like the police car example was simple yet easy to understand because I'm haven't ever been a police officer, but I've seen lots of movies. <laughs> <laughs> Pull over someone to the side of the road and hey, hit this number plate, bring the number plate back to dispatch. They obviously have to have humans behind that. Now we're able to put a computer in a car and they can look up the, you know, the vehicle database or whatever it is because they've got that available to them rewind 20, 30 years, the connectivity just wasn't there to enable that sort of adoption inside the car, but now it is. And so that's, that's what's driving this adoption is, is the technology that's available. Yeah, and, and that actually brings, brings it back to a technical bit too, that even now, depending on where you are, you might not have that high speed connectivity to remote vehicles, remote locations, et cetera. And so if you're relying on cloud where all your commute, compute is in a centralized wherever, and you need good speed to get there, and you just don't have it, Edge is your best option there, because you can put all of your resources within the vehicle, have everything processed locally, send summaries across what, what connectivity you've got. If you have connectivity at all, you can even batch process it. You can take care of it when you come back to the station, do your upload, download, synchronization. Yeah, admittedly, we're back to Lotus Notes at that point. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the same out. idea. We are never going back to Lotus Notes. <laughs> it's coming back. Part. Now, um, I like that uh, comparison indeed with uh, the client server 20, 25, 30 years ago, mainframe before. Because for me, the edge, uh, and thanks to the internet connectivity, indeed, it's an efficiency thing because we have better connectivity a little bit everywhere, even in planes now as well, is that for me, the edge is uh, IoT uh, version 2 or version 3, the next generation of IoT, 
which we did, yeah, maybe then 10 years ago with uh, objects becoming smart and connected with the internet. Well, for me, the edge is now, we have more uh, compute power. We have the connectivity already now as well with 4G, 5G, 6, 7G, what is coming. And so uh, for me, it's a typical evolution of client server, IoT, Edge, and yeah, what will be next? Yeah, I, I, one of the things that we didn't really talk about too much on this season on the podcast, but we certainly did um, when we were talking about AI, was what's uh, called in, in um, sociology technological determinism. Effect effectively, the fact that we, because we can do something, we will do it. And I, you know, going back to your police car example, I'm not sure, uh, to Gina's point, I'm not sure that the community is 100% bought into all that technology, but I am absolutely sure that the availability of that technology has led to its deployment all over the place. And this is true uh, basically everywhere at the edge, whether it's um, you know autonomous driving, um, IoT, surveillance, uh, retail, et cetera. I mean, um, are customers asking for those put your stuff on the thing and it automatically charges you? Uh, or is that something that, that is being driven by the business? Or is that just being driven by the fact that it's new and cool and exists? So that's another factor that we have to keep in mind here, that essentially smartphone tech has given us this bonanza of portable, low-powered, connected everything. And that that is driving the adoption of edge technology as well. Yeah, it's definitely an efficiency thing, right? Businesses want to make money, and mm -hmm. by definitely. deploying edge things makes their business more efficient and makes them more money. Then that's what's primarily going to adopt it, or something like compliance, safety, you know, regulatory things that they must do. I think those are the sort of the two key pillars, I would say, of, of, of driving it as well. And and it brings up an interesting point because the ubiquity of this technology, the the availability of it today, has revolutionized the way that we not only look at the organization of what we do, but how we do things inside that organization. And I have a very concrete example of this from yesterday. Walk into an Apple store and go to the cash register. Go on, you'll come back empty handed because Apple stores do not have a traditional store layout. Mm -hmm. You know, we always think about that. There is the cash register system that kind of blocks the front. You are forced through a choke point to get in there. An Apple store, and quite honestly, quite a few other newer retail organizations, kind of technologically advanced retail solutions, they don't. How do we take payments? Well, your sales associate is your payment uh, processor. They have a little device in their pocket that can do that. Europe has been on the, the cutting edge of this for a long time in the way that you pay bills. In the US, your credit card disappears somewhere. In Europe, you people would freak out about that because your credit card's never supposed to leave the customer's site. Instead, they bring the payment terminal to you. And we're starting to get that here in the US because we're really starting to drive this adoption. We've gone from Wi-Fi and other connectivity options being something that's nice to have so you can surf your phone while you're waiting on your pizza to be delivered to the table to being something so critical to the operation of the business that it's no longer considered a an add-on. It's essential to the way things operate. And that is driving edge adoption to rethink how we do things. Ghost kitchens would not exist without Uber Eats. The idea of putting a kitchen in a building with no seating is insane. But today, it works because they don't need to have seating anymore because they don't have any customers in the, on premises. So I think that one of the, the important things that edge is delivering to us is the ability to shatter the paradigms that we have created for ourselves. Restaurants must have uh, cash registers. Device information must be sent to the cloud to be processed because iPhones can't do that. But can they? And that's one of the challenges that we are overcoming today. 